Hi, it's Greg Hurrell here with another Vim screencast. Uh, today I'm going to talk about color. So uh, the set of color schemes that I use is A16. This is the project up on GitHub um, and there's a nice preview page that's linked to there. Uh, the scheme that I've been using in the screencast so far and that I use every day is this one called Ocean. Uh, but there are plenty of other nice ones here. There's Solarized, which was is very popular. I used that for like a number of years. Um, another one I like is I like Tomorrow, Twilight. There's plenty of like pretty nice stuff here. Um, there's a grayscale scheme, which is interesting if you want to go for the like almost no syntax highlighting approach. And um, then there's some weird kind of novelty ones like this green screen thing. Uh, but in any case, with a combination of some tools, you can integrate this fairly nicely into your Vim workflow. Uh, so the first tool is the Base16 shell project, which uh, basically is just a set of shell scripts that look like this. Um, they print escape sequences that iTerm knows how to understand. Uh, and basically you can run a command in the shell and have it change the color scheme of the terminal without having to download like a scheme file. Uh, the other handy project is the Base16 Vim project, which is basically just a set of color schemes that you can load in Vim using the normal color colon command. I mean, all this stuff that I'm going to show you is in the context of iTerm2. I don't know how well this works in Terminal App. Uh, it definitely does work in iTerm2. So let's look at what this looks like in practice. Um, I think let's actually have a look at what scheme I'm running right now. I'm running Ocean Dark. That's my default. So I got some feedback that it would be nice to use a higher contrast scheme to make things easy to read on the video. So I have these commands set up where I can basically toggle color schemes on the fly. Um, let me open up something in Vim so that we've got something to look at. Um, so that's what that one looks like. Let's go back to Dark Ocean. You'll notice that when I change the color scheme, uh, it's another color scheme. Let's go to grayscale. When I change the color scheme in the terminal, the terminal immediately updates. Uh, when I change, but it doesn't necessarily update immediately in, in Vim. So Vim will update the first time it gets focus. So let me show you how all this stuff works. Uh, first of all, I'm going to go to my shell startup files. I've got some functions defined here. Um, which uh, I will link to on GitHub in the screencast notes. Basically, this color function, if not passed any arguments, it just shows the current color scheme. Um, it does that by catting this Vim base 16 file. So that's what happened before when I ran color. And just to show that I'm really doing what I say I'm doing, it's just a file with two lines in it. Um, it allows you to type help if you can't remember the color schemes. And what it's going to do in that case is run this help command down here. It's going to look in the directory where all the base 16 shell files are and dynamically just print out a list of them. Um, and then it's got these dark light variations that actually create that little dot file. So put the color in it and put the background in it. And then run the scheme with the corresponding name. Um, as long as it exists. If it doesn't exist, it's going to print some error message. If I go dark foo, it's going to go, there's no dark foo scheme. Um, and then, of course, I've got these little aliases here, dark and light, so I can just do what I've been doing this whole time and type words and have them activate immediately. So that's the shell side. I really like the way I can do that without having to like open a preference pane or anything like that. In terms of the Vim integration, uh, I've got a file here. Uh, down the bottom here, you can see I've got an auto command set up that whenever Vim gains focus, it's going to check that the color scheme is correct. And that's why you saw... I could change the color scheme uh, in the terminal and it wouldn't take effect until I focused Vim. Oops. Let's get tomorrow back. There we go. So yeah, it runs this check color scheme function over here. Um, this setting, base 16 color space, make sure we're in 256 color mode basically checks to see if that config file exists. If it does, um, and it's got this dark light configuration in it, we're just going to set the background to darker light using the standard set background command, otherwise we'll error. And then if the name 
in the file of the color scheme corresponds to an existing file on disk. Then we're just going to use colon color, standard colon color command to source it. Otherwise, we're going to complain. And if the file doesn't exist, we're just going to use my default, which is base 16 ocean. And finally, we're going to italicize the comment highlight group because I really like to have my comments italicized. Um, so that uses the pinnacle plugin that I wrote. Um, it's probably useless for any other purpose than this exact one. Uh, but basically that just takes the comment highlight group and turn, makes it an italic version while preserving all the other attributes. Um, and then finally we fire auto commands to make sure that everything that cares about color schemes still works. So for example, you notice I've got this status line stuff going on where I focus different panes, the status line changes. So I want to make sure that that is aware of whatever the current color scheme is too. Um, so that's the Vim side. And uh, I guess one final thing that I'd like to do before I say goodbye on this one um, is just note that there's this school of thought that suggests that you shouldn't have syntax highlighting when you edit code. Um, and so I played with this and I found it to be pretty interesting. Um, and so let's look at that in terms of the, the grayscale scheme. Uh, Base 16 provides this pretty cheap way to try out effectively syntax highlighting less code editing. The highlighting is still there, it's just so subtle that it's not really obvious anymore. Um, I kind of like this, it reminds me of like reading from a textbook. Um, but the truth is, yeah, most of the time I do just use ocean dark. Um, but in these screencasts I'll use tomorrow dark because it has higher contrast. So uh, thanks for listening. I hope there's something useful there for you and uh, tune in again soon because I've got more coming.